Welcome back to the Raising Our Vibration podcast, where we explore higher consciousness through spiritual practice. Today, Stephen and I are going to dive into portals into the unmanifested. And this was a continuation of our series on Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, where we use excerpts from The Power of Now as a springboard into practice. So The Power of Now is a powerful book and hope that you have all read it. If you haven't, or if you haven't read it in a while, we highly recommend reading it again. And no matter how many times you read it, that's a conceptual experience. And it's important. It's important to get an understanding for what you're doing, but for what you're doing in terms of shifting from egoic consciousness into presence, awareness, pure consciousness. So that's the, that's the basic shift that the book describes. But it's really, it's the practice that makes the difference, that actually transforms consciousness. So reading the book is, is a wonderful springboard, but it's really the practice. And not just practicing once, but returning to that practice again and again and throughout your day that will really transform your life so that your life has being awareness as the background of all experiences, which is the background of all our experiences. We just don't always recognize it. So let's get right into portals into the unmanifested, which is chapter seven in The Power of Now. And let's first talk about, before we do that, let's, let's define some terms. So manifested and unmanifested, what, what do these mean? So the manifested is that which appears to us, that which arises in perception, that which arises in our experience. And the primary mistake we make is that we think we see things or perceive things as they are. So we look out or we have an experience and we, we experience it in a certain way, but we think that's how things are. And what we don't realize that is that our perception is highly filtered so that out of the infinite data points that come into our being through neuroception, underneath our conscious awareness, we are focusing on specific data points and relating to them in a specific way. And that gives us or gives rise to a specific experience. So we don't just experience what is, we experience a certain aspect of what is from a certain point of view. So we have this very limited and partial experience, but we think we're experiencing life as it is. So that's the manifested. That's this partial, limited experience that we have. The unmanifested is that within which or out of which the manifested arises. Okay, so why is the unmanifested or connecting with the unmanifested important? Eckhart says on page 130, Having access to that formless realm, formless being the unmanifested realm, is truly liberating. It frees you from bondage to form and identification with form. It is life in its undifferentiated state prior to its fragmentation into multiplicity. We may call it the unmanifested the invisible source of all things, the being within all beings. It is a realm of deep stillness and peace, but also of joy and intense aliveness. Whenever you are present, you become transparent to some extent to the light, the pure consciousness that emanates from this source. You also realize that the light is not separate from who you are. 
but constitutes your very essence. So the unmanifested being itself, pure consciousness, the light of awareness is who we are on the most foundational level. But we don't normally recognize ourselves in that way, right? We normally identify with this body, with the thoughts we have in our minds, with uh, our name, with our occupation, our roles, with our personal history, with our beliefs, right? That's the conditioned, that's the manifested. We normally identify with that. We identify with form and we get stuck in our identifications and we suffer as a result. So this liberation of the unmanifested is a powerful practice, a recognition of who we are on the deepest level. And so today in our practice, we're going to talk about and then explore experientially with all of you portals into the unmanifested so that we have a felt experience of our deepest being, of being itself, of presence of pure awareness. All of these are pointers toward that. So in chapter seven, he mentions many different portals into the unmanifested. Uh, one is chi or life energy. So life energy by sensing ourselves as life energy, as this vibrancy, this aliveness, that is a portal that where we kind of disidentify with this seemingly solid body and feel ourselves as energy so that we start to have loosen up this sense of being this sort of separate, um, bound by the skin being. And we start to have this more fluid, energetic, flowing sense of who we are connected to the source of life. And the universal energy that is expressed through us. So life energy, that's, that's a portal. And as we feel that within us, it starts to engage us in a deeper level of being below our mind, people below our ego and consciousness. And it opens us to what's called formless awareness. So stillness, silence and spaciousness, which are even deeper portals into the unmanifested. And so that's what we're going to explore in our practice today. First, having a felt sense of life energy flowing within us. And I'll guide us into that part of the practice. And then Stephen's going to go from there and lead us into feeling the stillness underneath all movement listening to the silence underneath all sounds, and then opening to the vast, boundless space of awareness itself. So I know, Stephen, you have um, a client experience that you'd like to share that relates to specifically these um, three um, formless objects, so to speak, of stillness, silence, and spaciousness. So. I'll uh, pass to you for that. Kevin, thank you. Thank you. And love and blessings to everybody who is listening to us today, because we really do invite you to share in this presence that we are speaking to right now. Uh, actually, I was, as, as you were speaking, I was thinking of that particular client, and this is just the way a client was, might approach, for example, a lot of meditative practice from, from a very conceptual point of view. And then suddenly another experience of a very good friend of ours, uh, which is perhaps even more poignant and even more applicable to what we're speaking about, sprang to mind, Kevin. Um, and that is a, a good friend of ours, a neuroscientist who lives up there in Carmel by the sea. And everybody, I think, who, who has lived in the United States during storms will be able to relate to this. And this, this is why particularly I thought this was even more relevant than the client experience. Um, he, he described that in the recent times of storms, the, uh, the power went off, the internet went off, and everything else uh, disappeared <laughs> in, in a sense that 
all the things that we're often used to, our, our media, our televisions, phones, the, the appliances, all of that, and, and this constant hum that we're often not aware of, of the power lines and the power in the area and it, all of that in, in the house and outside the house went off, shut down for, I can't remember how long it was, maybe a couple of days. And he then described that the a most amazing felt sense happened to him because he started to become aware of all the stillness because everything was so still. And he realized that the background of, you know, just exactly what we're talking about, that was why I thought this was such a great example. At the background of all the noise, you know, of our mind or the noise of our media, our appliances, our our busy days, our, the electronics in our house, which most of us have a lot of these days, suddenly he realized, well, when that hum stopped, there was this real stillness that actually had been there all along. He just had noted, noticed that it had been overridden by all the other hums and whirrings and noises of everyday life. And then when he went out, so it really opened up that stillness to him. And, and, and then he said he, he went outside and he was suddenly aware of this incredible silence because there was no longer the electronic hum, you know, of the power lines of everything else. Because in fact, he sent me a photo where a tree had come down just near his house and of course had taken out all the power lines and, and a lot of the energy of, of the area, every, everything stopped. So he said he was also aware that there was this incredible silence, again, that was always there, perhaps, you know, only broken by the sound of the birds and the more, just, just gentle animal sounds. But when, especially, you know, deep at night or really early in the morning, there's just this absolute crisp and beautiful opening to the uh, silence itself underneath everything. And he said he'd, he'd, he'd never really actually felt it, but here he could feel it because it was all around him. And, and then, of course, he said that made a, an opening for that space because he was also aware that without all the lights of the, you know, surrounding area, because everything was off, he was suddenly that much more aware of the sky and the, especially at night, the sky and the stars, because we know, I'm, I know this from living so near to Tokyo, that when there's a lot of activity, it tends to do, you know, the, it fills the atmosphere with light, even when you're not quite aware of it. So when all the lights are out, I remember in the uh, fires of 2011, because I was in that big earthquake in Japan, and there were fires that that literally put out everything in Tokyo. There was no electricity that for, for anywhere. So I was walking through Tokyo in pitch darkness, which I can tell you is a very eerie experience. And it made you very present to everything else because you're suddenly aware, wow, when Tokyo's on, there you don't you don't pick up any of that. But when it's off, oh, there's this incredible, you know, space and openness that's there. So I just thought that was a particularly poignant example, um, because it speaks to all those qualities. And 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 I remember uh he said to me, he really felt it. It was just he actually, it's almost like an aha experience because he felt all those qualities uh, simply because all the, the, the busyness of the, the world around him that he was so accustomed to just simply disappeared. And then there was what was left and he'd never been directly, so directly perceptually aware so, to have such a felt experience of it. So I thought that was a particularly good one leading right into... Mm what we're sp speaking about here the client experience mm -hmm. was something similar but this i think this one right now is just really really apt uh, it strikes the the essential point mm -hmm. nice it, it reminds me of uh, another portal that uh, eckhart talks about in this chapter is when the mind stops thinking right and most people think Oh, that's just not possible. My mind, I, my mind is just spinning thoughts all the time. But when we actually 
immerse ourselves in sensory experience, the mind quiets, even if just for a few moments at first. But when we really feel a sensory experience, like we'll, we'll do at the beginning of this meditation, and, and then feel stillness, not just be still, but feel stillness, and really listen, another sense, to silence, and then open awareness to spaciousness in a felt sense. The mind does quiet. I th think you'll, all of you will, will find that's true to some extent as we go through this meditation. So let's get right into that now. So find yourself a quiet private environment. And if you're able to have your feet flat on the ground, and why is that? Because it gives us a real felt experience of the ground, of the earth, of the soles of our feet. And that sensory experience is where we're going to start. And then just cup your hands in your lap with the tips of your thumbs touching lightly. And why that hand position is, it's a posture, a mudra of openness. And then lightly close your eyes. So let's begin with sensory experience. So focus down into the soles of your feet, contacting the floor, the ground. And you might wiggle your toes and maybe press your feet into the ground to just awaken sensory awareness in your feet. And then allow your feet and your toes to soften and completely relax as if they're melting deep down into the earth. So really feel the earth through your feet. Feel the soles of your feet contacting the ground. Notice what happens as you do that, and you really tune in to the sensory experience. Tune into the softness in your feet. Notice how your mind begins to quiet. And then feel that softness in your hands. So now tune into sensory awareness in your hands, in your palms and fingers. And allow your palms and your fingers to soften and relax. and soften them even more. So you really feel this soft, open space in your palms. Tune into this soft, open space in your hands. And again, notice as you feel this soft openness in your hands, this open space, and your mind quiets down. Now imagine a string attached to the top of your head, drawing your spine gently upright. So feel this gentle upward pull from your perineum and your tailbone right up through the core of your body, right up through your spine and through the top of your head. 
you might feel this tingling aliveness is running up your spine, running up through the core of your body to the top of your head. Really feel into the top of your head. You might feel this tingling, this effervescent life energy that comes as your spine is drawn upright. And your chin is tucked just slightly. Feel that tingling aliveness, that life energy, right at the crown point, at the top of your head. The seventh chakra. Feel that opening there. That aliveness. Now, through that opening at the top of your head, just feel this sense of radiant life energy, this light of consciousness pouring in through the top of your head, lighting up, enlivening your whole brain, and pouring down through your neck and down through your shoulders, your arms and your palms, your fingers, pouring down through your upper chest and back, this light of consciousness, this radiant aliveness pouring down and filling your abdomen and lower back, your hips, your legs, your feet, and flowing down through you, down into the ground. Feel this presence, this radiant aliveness, this life energy flowing down through your whole body. Feel the entire space inside your skin present, alive. This presence, this light of consciousness, this life energy is the one light, the one life we all share. So through this aliveness inside your body, feel the connection to the aliveness all around you. Feel this presence within and all around you, extending infinitely in all directions. Infinitely in front of you. Infinitely behind you. infinitely out to the left. Infinitely out to the right. Infinitely above you. This infinite light pouring into you from above. And infinitely below you. Feel this infinite light. 
saturating the whole space. And Stephen will guide us from here. So gently resting in this presence, in this openness to what is. Let's settle into the present moment. Just as Kevin has been guiding you through the subtle energy body into feeling what's present and simply access the stillness that is already within you even though you mightn't have realized it even if your mind is busy even turbulent chaotic there's still this deep stillness underneath it And to find it, to find that, to find that stillness within is vital, because otherwise you're at the mercy of your mind with its continuous noise, you get lost. So here, simply we're aware of what's present. And we're going to become aware of the silent space between my words. Rather than just paying attention to the words, become more curious, more interested in the silent spaces. A silent space is when I stop speaking. There's an absence of sound. And that's what we call silence. When I don't speak, there's an absence of noise, of sound. So here you're aware there is an absence of noise. There is a silence. Which is an external thing. And then simultaneously, something happens within you. Deep inside you. And that's why it's so wonderful to be aware of this external silence. Even if you've heard this before, the most important thing is just to realize this now. Recognize 
the silence. When you pay attention to silence, what is it that you're paying attention to exactly? Nothing in particular. There is no content to silence. When I speak these words, the words are the content. And when I stop, there's no content. So as I pay attention to silence, what is it? Nothing, really. You're paying attention to the space of no content. And then something happens inside you simultaneously. You might notice when you pay attention to this silence. You can do it anywhere. Outside in the night. in nature, in a temple, anywhere where there's silence, simply becoming aware of it. So what's happening inside you when you become aware of this absence of noise, your thinking subsides, becomes less. Have you noticed you become still inside? moment you become aware of silence and pay attention silence you become still inside paying attention to silence or awareness of silence is a portal to inner stillness feeling of stillness inside where the ceaseless stream of thinking stops. And what's left now is only space. opening to space. Even for just a few seconds, opening to space. Being here, 
being present. Opening this space. It's so simple. There's nothing to figure out or think about. Just simply embrace thoughtless awareness. You haven't disappeared, you're still here, the essence is. It's emerging more fully now. That you're still. Opening to feeling the deep stillness of the body. Silence of your thoughts, spaciousness in the mind and heart. So now you pay attention to the space within you, in front of you. And in that space, you cannot find anything either. Nothing. Just the one looking at the space or feeling that spaciousness. And when you look more closely at that one, who am I? Look closer. Closer still. Again, nothing to find when you pay attention to the I, the one looking. There's no one there. No one to find it. Just vast pure, spacious awareness. Your entire being is peaceful, aware. If thinking comes, that's okay. The thinking is so much more subtle because there's more spacious presence. So rest in this presence. This openness. This openness to who I am. Who am I? Just go deeply into the spaciousness of what's present now. Who am I? And see what happens. The answer's not in words. Let's see if the answer comes. You're very open. You're very still. You're very silent. It's not answered through words or thinking. All that remains is still, silent, spacious consciousness that has no boundary. You don't own it. It's not yours. It's consciousness minus all 
content and form. Who am I? I don't know. It is this not knowing, the unknowing, and being able to rest in the presence of the unknowing. Not through words or concepts. No past. No future. No content. No identity. No name. No form. What's present is formless, wordless, vastness, spaciousness. Simply an inner, felt, spacious, present. Even those words describe something. This is within you. No content. Free from past. Free from the future. Limitless knowing. Rest in boundless, spacious awareness. And now very slowly, if your eyes are closed, slowly open them in presence. Continue in spacious, boundless presence as you go about your day. Bring spacious awareness into your day. Bring awareness of now, the freshness and wonder and openness and spaciousness of every moment. This unbound flow of knowing into every moment of your day. Thank you everybody for your boundless, still, silent, spacious, awareness. Kevin, back to you. Mm, thank you, Stephen, for that beautiful guidance. Thank you all for practicing along with us. And if you'd like more information on meditation and awareness practices like this, including the ROV meditation app and our Raising Our Vibration book, you can visit raisingourvibration.net. And we'd love to hear from you there. Until next time, bye for now.